Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda. Winter is coming and you all need a dose of vitamin C. So this week I caked citrus fruits, lime, lemon, orange, and grapefruit. To make these cakes, I prepared eight pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter, and then I dyed them according to the citrus fruits I was making. And now I need to not really carve these cakes. They're in the right shape, but I need to trim away all of the caramelization. This sounds pink today. Your t-shirt is pink. Am I just blending into the chair? You kinda are. Yeah. This is an old t-shirt. I wore this t-shirt to the field where I found Walter. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, oh yeah. This is where the vitamin C comes in. I'm not just gonna simple syrup these cakes with regular simple syrup. Quickly tell us how did you make the simple syrups? You okay. <laughs> to make the simple syrups, you said quickly. This simple syrup is so easy to make. It's just a combination of sugar, water, and then freshly squeezed juice like lime, lemon, orange, grapefruit, boil together. It's amazing. Lemon simple syrup for the lemon cake, lime simple syrup for the lime cake, orange simple syrup for the orange cake, and grapefruit simple syrup for the grapefruit cake. In my opinion, citrus is one of the best things to put in the simple syrup. It is delicious. Sir Squeeze helped me, of course, as usual, that's his job. Speaking of Sir Squeeze, you can pick up a Sir Squeeze along with my cake book in our book and bottle bundle on sale right now at howtocakeit.com. Click here. I could tell that he felt a real connection with the citrus fruits. Honestly, I had to tell him and the lemons and the limes to stop talking. What they were talking about? Being squeezed. Please. Everyone's always squeezing me. Once my simple syrup has soaked in, it's time to fill these cakes with Italian meringue buttercream and I want you to know that I've read your comments and I just want to say I'm sorry for any disturbances I have caused with this megaphone. <laughs> it is now time to crown coat and chill. <laughs> well I'm never giving it up, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? You know what I realized? The lime and the lemon both have like a little, thank you. You see, they have this here, lemon hump. I always tell you guys, save your cake humps. I use the tiny cake hump from my green cake. Um, I actually just use like a round piping tip to cut a circle out of that. And then I glued it on the top and crumb coated it into the rest of the cake. And then I did the same with the yellow dyed cake for the lemon cake. Guys, it's cold season, so share this video with someone that you love. Give them a dose of vitamin C. Yeah, remind them. Remind them to take Remind C. them to get their daily dose of vitamin C. So share this video daily. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, it's time to ice these cakes again and chill them. You just want to ice the cakes as smooth as you can. And for the lemon and lime with their little peaks, uh, just ice around the peaks. You don't want it to look like you added something on top. You want it to look like it's one, one shape. Peaks, right? Yeah. Peaks. Yeah. I think they're peaks. <laughs> nice. That's it. It's settled. While my cakes are chilling, I'm going to roll out some fondant. First thing I need to do is roll out some sheets of white fondant, and that's what I'm going to use to cover the flat, sort of what will be the face of each citrus fruit. Then I roll out a little bit of each color fondant that I've made for the inside, like the cross section of the fruits. After I roll out each sheet of colored fondant, I want to try and add some texture. I'm still stuck on how I'm gonna make the texture of the inside of these citrus fruits. So I thought I would try using, I have a piece of like, it's like a net that you're supposed to wrap around a rolling pin. Take the net and press it down by hand and switching the direction. I'm not super happy with the texture. I don't think it's quite right, so I'm gonna have to deal with that later. My iced cakes are chilled. Orhan is literally sitting here <laughs> smelling lemons and limes. <laughs> I'm not joking. My cakes are chilled, so it's time to cover them with fondant. Starting with my lime cake, I roll out the green fondant 
nice and thin. And then before I drape it over my cakes, I want to texture it with my shelf liner. Otherwise known as the turkey skinator. Carefully pick up the fondant by placing your hands underneath, drape it over your cake, and then carefully smooth it onto your cake with your hands, being sure not to rub out all of that texture you've created. Trim away the excess fondant at the bottom of the lime cake, and if you find that you have erased some of the texture, use your citrus rind skinator and sort of press it into the cake in those areas. We have another new member of our cake community this week. Michelle is getting ready for Oktoberfest with her beer stein cake. Check it out right here on how to cake it step by step or click the link below. I'm covering each cake in the appropriate color. Now the only one that, well it's not tricky, but the grapefruit, even though it's pink inside, a pink grapefruit isn't really pink on the outside. It's kind of like a golden yellow and it's blushing with bits of pink here and there. Cool. Whoa. See what I mean? Like it's yellowy, pinky, right? Are you still stuck in 2015 using a turkey skinator? Well, join me in 2018 and get yourself the all new improved citrus rind skinator. Just look at this. It's incredible. It, it looks the same with what you use. It is not the same. It is all new and refreshing. It's 1-855-721-HTCI. Believe me, you'll be thankful you called. Once all of your fruits are covered, it is time to paint them. Ah! I've decided to paint the rind of all four of my cakes with dust colors. I just wanna enhance it and make it look more realistic. For my lime, I'm using a lime green dust and a darker dust, and I'm just using soft dry brushes to brush it on here and there and create like texture and color variation. The lemon will change the least because they're pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, they're pretty smooth. I did use a really golden yellow dust that I had and another yellow, a combo of those two, brushed it all over the surface. The, oh, this is not an orange. For the orange, uh, my fondant was actually on the dark side, so what I used was a golden yellow to brush it over the fondant and tone down the orange a little bit. This orange looks like a pumpkin. It looks like a pumpkin. This orange is confused. Orange is a tricky color when it comes to food coloring, because it's always really bright. So I just wanted to take away some of that brightness. And finally, my favorite, the grapefruit. I used pink and a little bit of an orangey pink dust to create these sort of blush areas that you see. Grapefruits are always blushing. Grapefruit is your own. Uh, grapefruit is your own. <laughs> favorite? Favorite, yeah. Yes, grapefruit is my favorite. <laughs> when making the nub for each one of my fruits, I used my ivory gum paste to shape a nub for each one of my citrus fruits. Yes, Jocelyn, I'm still using ivory. Ivory is winning. So I like to use different tools like sculpting tools, paint brushes, uh, round piping tips. So I just looked at each fruit each time and created the appropriate nub. And then I also wanted to paint those nubs to give them a bit more life. So I'm using, again, some more of the dust colors, but I was using a little bit of clear food grade alcohol to make them look all realistic. I know you guys are always asking in the comments, where's Jocelyn? Jocelyn is working behind the scenes and she'll come here as often as she can. And by the way, what's wrong with Orhan? Yes, what's wrong with me? Yeah, I mean, other than him like smelling lemons on set, thinking that Pop-Tarts come in mushroom flavor, <laughs> what's wrong? Well, thank you, I guess. You're welcome. <laughs> The next thing I need to do is measure the diameter of the face of each fruit. So we're done this portion, you have to work on the inside. Now remember those sheets of white fondant that we rolled before and chilled? We're gonna pull them out of the fridge and we're gonna cut them to the exact right size that I need. Now I have four, this is not four. Now I have, <laughs> I do that all the time. Now I have four circles of white fondant that are the right size. I'm going to create the pulp of these citrus fruits. So I'm going to simply use a sculpting tool and tediously create the texture by hand. 
fondant. First thing I do is mark a circle on the surface of my colored fondant, making sure that that circle is the same size as my cake. Then I use my sculpting tool and I just simply go back and forth. It's like, think about like brackets. Curve, 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 right? And I'm going from the outside edge of the circle down to the center, all around it like a pizza. <laughs> and no, it didn't take forever. Oh, this is what took so long. It took forever. I want to add some life and a little more color by painting each one. For this I'm using well, I, I used a combination. I used some gel food coloring, some dust color, food grade alcohol, and I just painted the surface of each one to make it a little more vibrant and lively and shiny. I have to let these sheets of textured and painted fondant dry completely before moving on. In the meantime, while the fondant... He just picked up two more lemons <laughs> to smell. You have a problem. While my painted fondant is drying, I'm gonna take this time to make myself some paper templates of sort of triangles or pie slices, and I'll use this to cut all my segments of the citrus fruits. I use some mathematics, include the footage. I love next week's cake. I love next week's cake. If you think you know what I'm talking about, leave a comment below, and if you don't wanna miss it, Subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell because you're gonna love next week's cake. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I've completed making templates and now what I need to do is one at a time cut all of the segments for each fruit. I decided to make eight segments per fruit. The grapefruit technically should have more, but I wanted them to all be even. I'm sorry. I just, that's how my mind works. Actually, a grapefruit has, is always one. Always one. The next thing I want to do is glue all of these segments to the appropriate white circle. So I pull out the tiniest white circle of fondant, I flip over all my lime segments, brush on some clear piping gel, and then line them up on the circle. Then I repeat this for the lemon, the orange, and the grapefruit. And make sure to leave an even, it doesn't have to be a perfectly even, but you want a, a similar size border of white all around. Do you know what that white part is called? That is called the pith. 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 And I need to glue them onto the surface of each cake. I spread a thin layer of royal icing onto the face of the lime cake, and then I carefully pick up the circle with the lime segments and place it on top. And I just smooth the rind around and the circle, everything matches up. Then I repeat this process, carefully turning over the lemon, putting on the face of the lemon, turn over the orange, put on the face of the orange, and turn over the grapefruit and place on the face of the grapefruit. To apply some shine and sheen to the surface of each one of my cakes, I simply dab a brush in clear piping gel. Oh, I used clear piping gel again. And brush it over just the pulpy segments of the fruit. When you cut open a lemon or a lime or an orange or a grapefruit, it's juicy inside, or at least it should be. There's nothing more annoying than a dried up orange. Yeah. Why didn't I put googly eyes on these fruits? Yeah, we could have. I feel like citrus fruits honestly are too sophisticated for that. Yeah. That's what I, I feel like. This is kind of like a classy. Yeah, like, classy. Episode. Yeah, and they're a bit sour, so yeah. they don't they don't do that. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to get your dose of vitamin C before winter gets here. Also, check out Michelle's beer stein cake over on how to cake it step by step right here and check out my Pop-Tart Mega Cake right here, even though Cody and Orhan ate all the Pop-Tarts. Yeah, sorry about that. I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs>